Today we're going to begin a new study on where our Bible came from. It says in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 12, For the word of God is quick, it's powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The Bible is central to the whole of our Christian faith. I would submit to you that it, the entirety of our faith rests upon it. Because everything that I know about the living word comes from the written word. And to adequately understand this, we need to realize a sequence of events. There had to first have been revelation, which would have led to inspiration, which would have led to inerrancy, which would have led to ultimately canonization, which is the assembling of these books into one holy book. So you have to deal first with the issue of revelation. What is revelation? Well, revelation has to be discussed first because it comes first in the sequence of events. In general, the word revelation speaks of a disclosing of information that could not have otherwise been known. And when we speak of biblical revelation, we see two types of revelation. Um, the first type of revelation is what we call general revelation. Uh, general revelation is how God reveals himself naturally. It is a disclosure of himself through nature as the creator and sustainer of all things. And it comes through three things. It comes through nature, it comes through conscience, and it comes through history. Now, when we speak of nature, uh, the Bible says in Psalm 19, verses 1 through 6, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. So nature declares the glory of God. Through nature we see God. Who can walk out? You know, I, I heard B.R. Lakin one time, he said, only an educated man can be an atheist. Because the uneducated man, when he walks out and he looks at the glory of God, when he looks at God's handiwork, he doesn't say to himself, wow, what an accident. Instead, he walks out and says, something bigger than me made this. Someone special made this, and that's nature. Nature showeth the handiwork of God. Continuing in Psalm 19, verse 4, Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. So even the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament show his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. So the first form of general revelation is nature. The second form of, genera of, uh, of uh, general revelation is <clears throat> our conscience. The word conscience literally means cone, which, is, which means with. Science, which means knowledge. So every man is with knowledge. Knowledge of what? In Romans chapter 2, verse 14, For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these, having not the law, are a law unto, our, unto themselves. In other words, our conscience knows what's right and what's wrong. In verse 15, which show the work of the law that God has written in their hearts 
their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or excusing them. We all have a conscience. We all have a level of God knowledge. We all have a level of what is right and what is wrong. And then the third form of general revelation is history. In Deuteronomy 28, verse number 9, The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou wilt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. History, as we turn around and we look back, we see God's fingerprints in the way. We see God. We see every civilization that's ever come before us have gods. A uh, great book, um, I'm trying to think of the guy's name, uh, Richardson wrote a book called Eternity in Their Hearts, which I think every missionary should be required to read. He goes back and he looks at every culture and he finds God in their past. He finds that all All civilizations at one time were monotheistic. And over a period of time, they became, um, you know, pantheistic. But at one time, they were all monotheistic. And in his book, he shows how they go back to the God of the Bible, eternity in their hearts. Jim Richardson, awesome book, great read. It is seen by all men. Barnabas and Paul Paul said in Acts, uh, Barnabas and Paul, um, it is seen by all men. Barnabas, Barnabas and Paul ask, Men, why are you looking at these? We are also men of like passion with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is therein, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. You see, Paul and Barnabas is saying, is if you look in past, you see the God who made the heaven and the God who made the earth and the God who made the sea and all that is in them. He has not left himself without a witness. As such, it leaves all men without an excuse because he has the witness of nature, the witness of conscience, and the witness of, of history. Uh, Paul said in Romans 1.24, The invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power, so that they are without excuse. So as we break that verse down, the invisible things of God through creation are clearly seen and understood by the things that are made. That's you and me. Even his eternal power and Godhead. And because of that, we are without an excuse. It is that natural knowledge of God that is the basis for divine judgment. No man will be able to stand before God in that day and say, I did not know. Because nature cries out, God. Conscience cries out, God. History cries out. God. And then that leads us to special revelation. Special revelation is when God reveals himself to men directly in a personal way. It is information that cannot be learned through general revelation. It is it is information that cannot be learned by any other way but through God. In 1 Corinthians 2.14, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. What that speaks of is that there's only so far that we can go in our natural selves as into knowing God. God's going to have to intervene in a special way, in a direct way, in a personal way. And it must be accepted, the Bible says, by faith. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. God's going to reveal himself 
in some way outside of nature, outside of our conscience, outside of history. Swindle and Zuck, Zuck point out in their commentary that it was necessary as that it would have been impossible for Adam and Eve to just look around at God's creation in the garden and have been able to surmise from creation alone what God's will and purpose was for their lives. God had to have eventually communicated with them using words. So the conclusion would be that the ultimate form of special revelation is words, the Bible itself. For it is the Bible that contains the gospel that's necessary for salvation. Thus is the urgency of getting out this gospel. It is only through special revelation that we are able to learn truth about God that cannot be known or cannot be discovered by general revelation alone. So in conclusion, as we study the Word of God, we have to understand that it has to be studied in a sequence. First comes revelation. First comes general revelation, which is through nature, through our conscience, through history. But that's not enough. While all those things point out that there's something bigger than ourselves, and every culture will attest to that, they do not specifically speak to what God desires of us. They do not specifically address us in a direct and a personal way. That comes through special revelation. And once you understand what revelation is, now we can move on to inspiration. And we'll talk about that next time. God bless you guys.